Welcome again. My name is Matt Parker. I'm an aquaculture business specialist at the University of Maryland Extension. And over the past couple of years, I developed this online tool to help people who are interested in starting aquaculture operations or who are in operations do some economic forecasting that's a little bit more advanced than a basic Excel spreadsheet. I have a copy of this, uh, a little bit more sophisticated copy of this on my laptop. And I've helped lots of people, but it was a, a slow process. Like they're like, Matt, I need help. And then I'll say, well, that's great. Here's a bunch of information I need. Please fill it out for me. So they fill it out for me. I put it in my tool and then I hit the, the run button and it runs, it generates some reports. I send them back the results and they say, oh, thanks a lot. It's very helpful. I'd really like to change this one thing. So they'd send it back to me. I'd change it. We do the whole process again. And then occasionally it would be like, Matt, I, I really need some of this information this week. Can you send it to me? Can you run this for me? And I'll be like, well, I'm in Florida on vacation, so I can't really help you with that. You'll have to wait till I get back. So thanks to the National Sea Grant Office and Maryland Sea Grant, we put together a proposal and were awarded funding in order to take my Excel version with the software and the online or on my Excel version of my computer and turn that into an online tool that anyone that has internet access can use. So we thought it'd be good to go through it. So why don't we get started? Here's the web address. It's a short one that I put in to get us started. go.umd.edu slash aquaculture business. And when you click on that, it brings up our University of Maryland extension aquaculture page or business planning page. We scroll down, we get down to our, our links for the tool. And I want everyone to know that um, Chrome is the preferred browser for this tool. Somebody was using Firefox or something and it just wouldn't work and the developer didn't, couldn't figure out why. So please use Chrome. I have on here a, uh, a link, a PDF link that has some uh, instructions that you can look back if you uh, wanted to think up or wanted to see what was going on or wanted a little bit more information about the tool. Um, and it's got a table of contents and it goes through and tells you what the tool does, how to do everything with screenshots, how to, how to save files. I'll go through all this during our, our presentation in a couple of minutes. But that's something that if uh, you forget or you don't, before we get the recording posted, that if you wanted to put up or go through and look back at to kind of see what you needed to do, then uh, you, there's a resource there for you to use. So with that, we're gonna click on our link to our tool. And the first thing you'll notice is it comes up with this uh, little, this little page asking if you would be willing for me to send you a survey later on to see how useful the tool is so that we could get some feedback on it. Uh, really good to get feedback so that if we come up with a, more money to make another version and improve things. And I've already got a couple of ideas to make it easier in the future. Um, some ideas from people that have actually used it. So you can click no thanks and hit the button and go right to the, the tool. Or if you hit yes, hit the button, just type in your email address. And it says, take me to the tool. And then it automatically redirects you. And later on, I will send you a sur email survey that is optional that I ask you again if you're interested in doing the survey. And uh, then just to get some feedback. So here's our, our tool while we get started. So we have our home button, our model button, simulation reports, and advanced configuration. Generally, you don't need to worry about the advanced configuration. So we're not going to worry about that today. But if you scroll through the the web page with the report. It's got some information on what's involved. Some of those same basic instructions that are on the PDF if you need a, a quick refresher on um, what is there and what you need to do. So to start a new model, we go here to model, we click that and a little drop down button and we click new. That's it. That's how we started a model. And then we have to choose here whether we would like 
a bottom culture model or a water column model. If we choose water column, it's like, whoa, are you sure? There's gonna be some things that change. So if you accidentally hit it, it gives you a way to, to catch it before you, uh, before you go through with it. So our first uh, section here is our operating cost assumption. And there's a whole variety of things that you can put in. Um, like the, how many oysters you have in a bushel, uh, how many oysters you put in your retail container, how much they cost, if you're paying people, how much. Now this percent of general labor in year one. This is for a water column operations. So I put 50% because you know, you're not at full capacity yet. You know, if you're just starting out, it takes a little bit of time. So you're not gonna have full labor. And then year two, 100%. If you're a supervisor or you're, you're paying a supervisor or you're gonna pay yourself, you can put that into the supervisor owner, owner operator labor rate. And also, if you notice, if you hover over the input item, it gives a, it pops up a little ribbon that tells you like how what it is. So like this one says, if you pay a supervisor or draw a salary as an owner, enter the hourly rate. Now here, enter the number of weeks the supervisor or owner will work in a year. I've also included things like unemployment insurance tax, workman's comp, uh, FICA. Um, so if you are you paying those things, uh, then that you probably leave those alone. If you don't plan on doing that, any of that because you're doing it yourself, you can cut those out. I also have general liability insurance. And an estimate I received from an insurance agency is a basically $1,000 for every $150,000 a year in uh, revenue. So whatever that ends up being for you, you can put that in if the rate changes. We have insurance for boats, vehicles, repairs and maintenance, um, and overhead costs like all your internet, your phone costs, all that office supplies, that kind of stuff. This one's an important one, cash on hand to contribute to your business. This is how much cash you have that you're putting into the business. So that's a, that's a good thing. If you have zero, put it at zero. If you have a million dollars that you're going to put into it, put a million dollars. It's whatever you're going to contribute. Uh, any particular yearly fees um, that you might have, business license fees, anything like that, you can put in. And then I have an interest rate for opportunity cost. So opportunity costs are like what you could have earned if you'd have taken your money that you're going to contribute and put it in a different investment. It's like what you would have lost by forgoing or what you would have gotten if you'd have forgone this opportunity and done something else. So like if you were to say, I've got $200,000 and I can put it in a savings account and my interest rate on my savings account is 2%, whatever your money would would earn over the 10 year period that this model works for uh, at that 2%, that would be the opportunity costs. We can always, whenever you do a section, if you change anything, please hit the update model so that it refreshes anything so it doesn't lose it. If you wanna wipe it all out, hit clear, clear data. And then since we're in a water column, farm, the bottom culture area is grayed out and we can't select it. So it helps you from keeping putting things in the wrong place. So our water column, we're gonna put in our lease size. We have a percent of our lease harvested each year. So this one's gonna take a little, little math to figure out. So we're, I'm assuming it's gonna take on average about two years for your oysters from the time you put them out of your farm to when they are reach market size. So it's a two year growing cycle. That means to get going, the first year you're not gonna really harvest a whole lot. And then the second year you're gonna harvest and then the third year you're gonna harvest. So you're harvesting about half of your lease each year. If it takes three years, then you would do a third of your lease each year, 33% as a way to show your crop rotation going. And then we have, it calculates how much we harvest each year. And then what's your predicted survival? You know, if you think you'll get 50%, put 50%. If you think you'll get um, 100%, put 
And then uh, how many market size oysters are gonna be in your container? This will help to figure out how many containers you have to buy. And then you might get some, uh, some oysters that reach market size in the first year, and then some that reach second in the second year a certain amount. And then after that, all of them are gonna reach, you reach a market size. So it helps you kind of your production ramp up because it takes a little bit of a while to get everything going. Uh, square feet per container, that just helps make sure you have enough room in your lease. Uh, from what I've seen, you can put a lot of containers in an acre. You just want to have some room to, to move around them. How many mesh bags you're going to have in each of those containers if you use mesh bags? Uh, how much does your seed cost? Your lease rent? Uh, how many hours, general labor hours a year or do you think you're going to have to pay? And then you can, how many container, what percentage of your containers are you going to buy before you start? That's year zero. How many are you going to buy in year one? How many are you going to buy in year two? And then how many in year three? And finally down here, we get to how many oysters do you want to produce in a year once you get started? And then we have a, a little bit of stuff for our, if you're going to contract labor instead of having employees, what the labor rate is, how many hours they're going to have. And if you take an operating loan, what the interest rate is. Then we start getting into some of our risk assumptions, the things that we're not really sure about. And what I've done here is you can put in a minimum value, a most likely value, and then a maximum value. So if you're not sure, you can put in what you think it might be, and then what the, the bog, what the floor is, and what the maximum price you think it might be. Because I always have a hard time getting farmers I'm talking to give me a, a, a single price for a lot of things. You're like, well, you know, it kind of ranges, it could be this, it could be that. So what this model will do is it will take your minimum, your most likely, and your maximum value. And it runs for like however many times you tell it for 10 years. And every time it runs, it picks a different value out of that range that you put in there. And then after it runs a thousand times or 5,000 times, it averages everything together to give you a good idea of what it, your uh, price might have been and how things might have gone. So we can put in a bushel price, a half year, a half shell oyster price. We've got our yearly average fuel costs. Uh, while most water column farms like to sell primarily half shell oysters, some of them, like especially during COVID and things, some of them had to go to uh, the bushel market or the shucking house. So if you think you might send some to the shucking house, you can um, put in what percentages you think that it might range into. And then like, like with the price, it takes something out of this every time. And then we have our annual marketing expenses. You know, if you're just selling to somebody else, you know, you're probably not doing much marketing. If you have a fancy brand name, you probably got some annual advertising and things like that to go into. Any monitoring costs you have, you ship them off to uh, get tested for diseases or you're going out and you're just checking growth, how much that kind of cost it might be. And then I have this tricky little thing here called the yearly survival factor. This is my way of introducing mother nature to your farm. So in general, like we thought we're gonna get 50% survival from seed to market. Well, we're never gonna get exactly 50%. Some years we're gonna get more than 50%. Some years we're gonna get less than 50%. So mother nature, you know, there's a lot of things that go on on an oyster farm that will influence what a, uh, or how many oysters live or die. So this kind of throws in mother nature and puts some variability from year to year. So it's not just a straight 50%, it, it moves around a little bit. You might have good years, you might have bad years. And I'm gonna probably guarantee, you, I know there's some folks on this webinar that can probably tell you, you're gonna have some bad years. You may not think you will, but you're gonna have some bad years. No one saw COVID coming, that was a bad year. And then we get to our capital costs. Um, same thing, if you're not kind of sure what things might cost, you can put it in there. Uh, so we have a, a harvest vessel, because I have yet to find a oyster farm without a boat, a truck. Uh, if you're gonna buy any culture, or the culture containers that go into the, um, the, bigger, the bigger cages, 
um, those mesh envelopes. And then this is one thing that I'm going to improve on in the next uh, next version of this. This assumes 20 cages per line. I should have put that in there to where you could enter how many cages per line. But by the time I finally called it, the developers said that would be another $20,000 to go fix. And so we left it at 20 cages per line. So you might have to do a little math um, to get that part um, set up just how you want. And then there's optional items you can put in. Maybe you have a barge that you park out on the water that you work out of. If you have a front end loader or a forklift or something to help carry things around. Any other equipment you might have, uh, harvest baskets, pressure washers, whatever you might, weed whackers if you have a lot of grass, you know, whatever you might need. And then we have other categories. This could be anything that we didn't think of that you might want to go, might want to put in there. So in this case, uh, for this model and the default, we have uh, other number one. It's going to range between $95,000 and $201,000. So but we think it's going to cost $200,000. So our other number one must be a gold-plated shell washer slash sorter or a pearlception oyster thing and rebobber. So uh, that you can put whatever you want if there's something that we didn't we didn't think of. And then if down here in the bottom, we have a loan section. If you are in Maryland and thinking about taking out one to three Marbitco loans, you can put the Marbitco loans in here. And I have rigged it up so that it will calculate the interest only period in the right, right years for your cash flow. And it will calculate the 40% principal forgiveness on your first loan, 25% principal forgiveness on any other loan, and, uh, and figure out your amortization payments. If you put in, you're gonna take a loan in year zero, that means you're taking it out before you get started. That's your, your initial investment that you're, that you're putting in. And then if you have to get a loan from somewhere else or you're not in Maryland, you can put in your conventional loan information. So those are all the, the inputs that we have. The water column, I mean, excuse me, the bottom culture ones are fairly similar. There's just a few things that change. So now we can either save our changes or we can run a simulation. So just to give you an example, if you click save your changes, it pulls up a, uh, a page where you give it a file name. And I'm just gonna say test. And then it says, you hit save model and it pulls up a, a window for you to just uh, save it, just like it's downloading anything that you've ever downloaded before from the internet. So you hit save and it saves it. On the flip side, you can hit go up here to model if you've saved it in the past, hit open and you select the file and it pulls up the uh, file and you load it up, you open it and everything's there ready just like you had it. I think this is a good time to point out that there is nothing that you put into this model that the university, the federal government, NOAA, or myself can see. We don't save any information that you put into it. So if you forget to save it, it's kind of gone. Um, but you can save that file. Now you can send me that file and I can upload it into the model and take a look and help them through it. But that is the only way anyone else will see any of the data you put in there. I mean, it's all private. We don't keep any of it. Um, and no one can see it unless you choose to share it with. Them. So we've got our model. Let's go to our simulation. So it comes up and we have a choice of running it 1,000 times, 5,000 times, or 10,000 times. If you run it 5,000 times, it takes longer than the 1,000 times. If you run it 10,000 times, it takes the longest. So for this, we're going to just leave it at 1,000 times. It has this thing called a random number C generator. That's part of the advanced configuration that you really don't have to worry about. And that just changes the number where it starts picking random numbers from in, in the simulation. So we hit start. We get a little pop-up with a wheel so that we know that it's working and reminds you that if you took 10,000, it's gonna take a few minutes. And this is spinning away. 
and it should be finishing up here pretty soon. Unless my internet is running kind of slow today. Oh, there we go. So now we get to our reports. So the default report is the financial summary, which uh, is, uh, is you can change whatever the default was. I felt this one had a lot of useful information. And starting from the top, we have our uh, internal our rate of return. This particular farm with all those assumptions we had in it averaged out 14% uh, return on the money that you invested. Uh, the net present value of the money that you invested over the 10-year period was $825,000. The best way that I can think of to, to describe net present value is, so last week there was a $1.5 billion lottery. Someone in Maine won it. They had to choose the 30-year option, which is $1.5 billion, or they could take the lump sum. Well, the lump sum was what that present value of the money was of that $1.5 billion. So it, it was much, it was 700 and some million instead of 1.5 billion or whatever it was. So that's how the, I describe the net present value. It also calculates your average yearly accounting profit over the 10 year time frame. It calculates what year you got back to a positive cash balance because you spend the money before you start to harvest. There's opportunity costs that I talked about. So the opportunity cost of what we could have earned if we invested that money in somewhere else, whatever the percentage was, was $171,000. But the net present value of our um, investment in oyster aquaculture was $825,000. So if your net present value is higher, that seems like it might be a good alternative. And then I have the percent of operations that had a negative net present value and a negative internal rate of return. You want this number to be low when you are doing it. The closer to zero, the better. So this particular one had 4.4% of what I call failed operations out of the 1,000 simulations. So that's, that's not too bad. If it had a 99% failure rate, then that would mean your assumptions are wrong or this is just not the, the the investment for you, there might be something going on and you're just not getting the returns that you probably need. If you scroll down, you'll get a couple of graphs. And this just shows the distribution of each of those items that we had um, listed up above on how it, how it was and what it kind of looked like. They all kind of cluster around the middle. And then our next report is uh, one we've got here is our assumption summary. So if you wanted, didn't want to save the file, like if you're at a library or something like that using this, you can uh, save a PDF or let me show that. You can save a multitude of files types for all of these reports, whatever works best for you. Um, and it put, this has all the uh, inputs that you put in to run the model. So if you wanted to, you could send me a copy of this um, of these inputs, and then instead of sending me a file, and I could um, put them in and help you interpret whatever we got out of it. Then we have a capital cost report. And capital costs are all those investment items. So it, it's got what we bought, how many of them that we bought, how much each one the average cost was in the simulation, how long they're going to be used. Uh, we assume a zero salvage value, and Depreciation is calculated on a straight line 10 year depreciation. And then we can go down here a little further. It tells us the grand total of our investment, how much we use from our bid code, how much we used from all of our available cash, um, all of the cash we had available, the total dollars per acre that we invested. And then we have a graph so you can see like what how your money was spent percentage wise. Uh, most of it is culture containers. And on page two, some of those optional items, our big gold plated whatever shell washer thing we had was our largest um, other item. And then we can see where we got our money from. So we got $100,000 from our bid code and $200,000 from our own funds.
And then we also can project some income statements. And this is has the gross income at the top, how many half shell oysters you sold, how many bushel oysters you sold, um, all your line items. And then it calculates how much of those line items cost per oyster harvested and per bushel harvested for 10 years. Down here at the bottom, it gives you a break even price for that particular year. Uh, and on a per oyster basis and a bushel basis, and your gross profit margin for each individual year. In the future, I want to have that as a, an averaged amount in the financial summary uh, for the total investment. And like I said, it's it's years one through ten. So this is um, kind of small and hard to read. So I also put in a income statement summary which is a little bit bigger. It just, it's got all the same information. It just doesn't have the per oyster or per bushel amount in there for what you, uh, how much each investment was. So you can see all, all the same information. This one includes a couple of graphs. So you can see how your total, your gross income starts here at nothing when you don't have anything and then you start harvesting all through the 10 years. The line in the middle, is the average um, of all the simulation values. And then this blue, next blue here is between 25% and 75% margin. And there's the, I mean, the range of the distribution and 5% to 95% were in there. And then you, these little dotted lines are your minimum that it was in any given, in, out of all the simulations and the maximum that it was. So. All of our numbers are above zero, which is a good thing in business. So this looks like it might have been a, a decent uh, investment. We also have the same thing with total cost. When you're starting out, your costs can vary a lot more, but over time, they should kind of even out to what you would know how things should be. We also have our income before taxes, same, same thing. Our break-even cost for oyster harvested. You know, the first year we're not harvested too many. So it's a little bit high and then it drops down over time. Same with the bushels. And then we have our gross profit margin on a, a bar or chart bar graph. And you can see, as to be expected, the first couple of years are not really good and then things get better. But in this particular simulation, year six, something bad happened. We had bad survival and low prices and everything. We didn't do so great. That was our, our a really bad year, but then it got better and then it got worse and then it got better. So that's that um, survival, the yearly survival factor, the mother nature coming into play right there and making things change. We also have a projected annual cash flow statement. Um, it shows what your beginning cash balance is, how much money you had coming in, uh, income during the year, and everything else. So in this particular case, you know, some things were looking pretty good overall, but if we're looking at our cash, you know, we had $200,000 we were putting in. We only borrowed $100,000, but our outflows were 600 and some thousand dollars. So we, we had to come up with $500,000 somewhere to help just get us through that first year. So, you know, maybe, Looking at the cash flow, it might be good. Maybe we should have taken out another loan or something to help get us through or not had a $200,000 shell washer um, or oyster sorter or whatever we've got in there to, to help out that quite a bit because we wouldn't have, wouldn't have to spend that much money. So it, your cash balance goes down, goes down, goes down, and then it starts coming back up when you start to harvest. We have the same uh, types of graphs with our, how much with cash comes in each year how much cash goes out each year, and then our net cash flow for each year. And then we'll move down. We also have a production summary that gives you an idea of how many oysters and how many bushels you um, harvested each year, uh, and how many per acre of your lease total lease, and then how many per acre of your lease that you harvested. So we got 
year one, we ended up with 211,000 bushels per acre of our entire lease. Um, but we only, we harvested um, part of that. So it's we all, only what we harvested, we got part of it. And it uh, shows you your yearly average. We wanted 2 million a year, but thanks to mother nature, we averaged 1.5 million over the uh, entire, uh, entire time frame. And it's got another graph, just like the others of how many we did per year in oysters and bushels. And then kind of the, the distribution, just like we had in one of the other graphs on what is, uh, what, what those simulation results. So like I said, that, that's all the, the reports that we have going on and kind of the run through on how to do it. One thing that I noticed is if you uh, hit return to model, you can go back to the beginning and uh, you might need to, if you didn't save, you might need to put some stuff back in to show some of the differences for the water column model real fast. Excuse me, the bottom culture model. Here, water column stuff is uh, grayed out. We can't select it. So we have a bigger lease. We have the option to put in um, what some folks have called like the Swiss cheese effect. You might have a five acre lease, but not all five acres is actually usable. Um, how much you planted per year, we're going with a, or how much you harvested per year, we're going for like a three year crop rotation, so 33%. How many oysters, how many spat per acre that you put? And that's shortened out because I've got it zoomed up a little bit. We go up here and reduce it down a little bit. You can see we weren't doing 2000. Um, seed per acre we're doing, or spat per acre we're doing 2 million. And then uh, same things with survival, how much we put in each year. If you have to do any bottom stabilization, you can estimate the amount of what percentage of your lease might need bottom stabilization. And then I think the only differences might be some of the required items versus optional items. Um, that type of thing. So with that, that's our online tool that we have. If you think of something else, feel free to email me and I will uh, do my best to respond to you in a, a timely manner. All right. Thanks for tuning in and we will talk to you guys later. Let me know if you have any questions.